So on this project, ideally, so they're collecting initial information from a survey. Their goal was if somebody enters a survey, if it's a duplicate, the person would be notified or the record wouldn't be saved, you know, to prevent duplicates. The problem with that kind of is you can't do the comparisons of values in, in a form until it's actually been saved. So there's you can flag a record uh, as a duplicate uh, with branching logic if, if it were to match something or, um, but you can't stop or prevent um, something until it's been saved. Now, once it's been saved, you can use, and if my internet runs slow, I'm sorry, it seems to be lagging a little bit. Well, the first thing we tried to do was create a, a secondary unique field. And, and this is a unique field because you're, normally using a single field like if you use this look at the drop down you only have an option of one field but if you really want to search for unique fields my thinking was and this is as close to uh accurate as i could imagine if you concatenated the first name of the person with their email address, that should give you something unique. So if a husband and wife share an email address, if you were to concatenate their first name with their email address, you'd still get a unique value for that particular record. So I created this field called consent identifier and to look at that it's here it's just down a little bit further, Terry. Right, right, no, up, right no. there. Oh, yeah, it's called identifier, that's right. All right, so. Okay, so I did this thing that, that used the action tag set value and concatenated the first name on the consent with the email on the consent. So that creates a unique field and it needs to be in a field. You can't just pipe it because you can't do, can't create a second identifier unless there's an actual there's an actual value and a variable that you can compare it to that's why we created the field consent identifier variable and then i populate it with set value and then i hide it so people don't get all wanged out about it certainly you want it hidden on the survey so i was all set and then, so the only way to really, this is why the module was created. The only way after that is how are you going to find your duplicates and address them? And that's using the check for duplicates external module. So if we look at that, I mean, this is something that you can figure and you can see like 
difficulties when you do this or you, you get you get a result that looks like this okay some of these are very accurate because this is showing you 1414 and 4304 are duplicates so it allows you to go and check that and these two are duplicates these two are duplicates but what about all this crap here i mean all these are duplicates so you kind of need to take a closer look at them but theoretically these should be uh identical but why are these so the there's only two reasons that this wouldn't work number one if the if that consent identifier field that i created with the set value had not populated then it will show up here because there there is no consent identifier so it's going to show you all those blank consent consent identifiers together and there wouldn't be a consent identifier possible if the record was interrupted before they completed it like the person started to get squirrely once it asked for first name last name email address and they didn't put it in there <laughs> then they're going to show up in this match three option where there's no consent identifier there can't be a consent identifier if the values that drive it aren't there so logically all that seemed like it would work right and the reason i wanted to demo this is just so if you use the check for duplicates it can be useful but a lot of times you'll see uh a lot of times you'll see this um all of these you know in a row and you're wondering why and the reason is because there's no data something is missing like if you're looking for matches on the first name and there's no first name then everything that has a no first name is going to show up as a duplicate because they're all blank so there's a little bit more to this than you think and the documentation for the module is not bad but it doesn't really explain the nuances like why it shows up the way it does so and, and as you can see here you can you know match these fields or whatever to show duplicates but mm, it, it, we could have done this but we couldn't have done the uh secondary unique identifier thing that we did uh back here in the setup because the secondary identifier because it has to be a single variable it can't be two variables together so that's how we uh, got past that problem of concatenating two fields to get an actual identifier so all this is true the only hang up that i've got at the moment is the new records that are being created for some reason uh, are not activating the at set value so until i figure that out the solution is just to and i wanted to demo this too um, just in case you're ever in a situation like this and you need to try and shorten your attack time so like I, I have uh 4605 let me make sure this is up to date right so I've got record 4605 so if I open 4605 here now the at set value will get run as soon as you save this record why it's not being triggered when the person submits the survey I have to explore 
but I'm going to, I know that it's going to work here. So if I click on save and I go back to my little thing here and I refresh it, 4605 is gone. So, so that's all that it took to, to push that set value action tag and get this to work. Um, Thank you. Well, yeah, you're welcome. So now I want to do 4596. So I'm thinking, oh my God, now I got to get a record status dashboard. I got to go find, find it for 4596. No, you don't have to do that. So all you need to do here is go back in into this record homepage and instead of 40, record 4605, um, we're going to get 4596, right? So you're just going to find up here where it says 4605, right? 4605 is the ID. And we're going to change that to 4596. Hit enter. And here's the record. The point of this is to remember that you can kind of, in a pinch, play with a URL to get where you want to go. You don't have to go back and forth and search and whatever. As long as you know what you're doing with the URL, you can get to that record. And so I come here, I click on it, I say edit the response for the survey, I save and exit. It takes me back to my record homepage. I look over here, I refresh this, and it's gone. So the point of this demonstration was to, one, make sure that you understood why all of these are showing as matches, because technically they are. The consent identifier is blank. And when you set up this check for duplicates, it will show any, if whatever you've configured, uh, it will break it up and show them as all being duplicates. And if I were to add, I mean, I, I was playing with this at one point, and then I, just for my purposes, because it made it easier for me at one point, because I could, well, that's a separate issue. Um, so if I configure this to also show, let's say, the record ID, And save this, and I rerun this. I get nothing because none of them with the record ID are going to be duplicates. They're all going to be unique. So that didn't really help me at all. Every record ID is going to be unique, so automatically I'm not going to find any duplicates. So that's no help. Um, so anyway, but at one point there were like multiples, so I, I can say this one more time, um, or once we get rid of this, there was another issue here, uh, in, in this output here, I found duplicate IDs. So 4524 would show up twice, 4545 would show up twice. I had one record here show up three times. Why was that happening? This is because there were records that were imported and when they were imported, they added a record ID to a different event so that the back end part of the database holds a field called record ID, which can only be associated, should only be associated to the first instrument, and it would be the first field on your first instrument in your first event. One record ID. But if you do an import and you try and import a record ID uh, into a different event, and it takes it, then you've got 
two record IDs, which the database takes because it's a different, each event has its own identifier. If you look in project setup and go to the um, define my events, you can see each event has its own event ID. So if you have a record ID associated to 977 and a record ID associated to the event 979, which should never happen, then you'll start getting multiple numbers when you use the duplicates and you'll see repetitive numbers. So in situations like that, you really sort of have to come to us. We have to get in the back end and I had to delete all these duplicates that had shown up as a result of um, faulty data import. Anyway, I think that's really all I have to say about this, unless there's any questions. Uh, the I think I think the check for duplicates in this project is very useful. I remember when it first came out. Too bad Jason Gass isn't here because he looked at it and I looked at it. And, you know, I didn't know how this worked. In fact, I really never paid a whole lot of attention until Tanya came to me with this issue a couple of days ago. And so, in fact, when I first started clearing out the duplicates, I didn't even know why there were duplicate IDs, duplicate record numbers until I started hitting a wall with clearing them out. And I went back to the, in fact, I had talked to Vern about this because I there, there was some weirdness and I hadn't noticed that there were two event IDs for the same record. Record ID, record ID, not just record, but record ID, which is the variable um, that is unique. So once I found that, then it was simple to sort of grab all the numbers that had the, that event in them and run a delete statement and get rid of all of those at once. But it left all these, and that's the reason this is, is because those either first names, last names are blank, or the action tag failed to populate that um, consent identifier field. I know that was a lot of a lot of talk about something fairly small, but I just kind of would like to share some of the problems that we come across and how things actually work on a external module that can be very useful, but confusing if you don't understand it. So anyway, my goal now is to try to figure out why the asset value action tag is not running as soon as the uh, survey is submitted. Um, so once I figure that out, maybe that'll be another demonstration on another day.